Hi everyone, this is Zach. In this video lecture, I'll be talking about the concepts of multicollinearity. So, very brief introduction. What is multicollinearity? Basically, if you use a model, let's say two variables, variable A and variable B, to predict another variable, variable C, multicollinearity is a problem that happens when variable A and B are highly correlated, and we'll explain more about what that means later. But if they are basically kind of vary in the same way, then it's very difficult to separate the effects of the two variables. Is it variable A which is causing C, or is it variable B, or is it a bit of both? So let's talk first about correlation. So when you have two random variables, there's, you can calculate some, what is called the correlation coefficient, which is often denoted by the letter R, which measures how these two variables are correlated. And the correlation is a number that ranges from minus 1 to plus 1. So if x and y are positively correlated, and in other words R is bigger than 0, this means that when x increases, usually you also see y increase. If x and y are negatively correlated, and are in other words less than zero, then as x increases, y decreases. And if the absolute value of r is close to one, meaning it's very near one, or it's very near minus one, then we will say that x and y are highly correlated. And here's a bunch of plots which I shamelessly or lazily took from Wikipedia showing the different correlations. The x-axis is one variable, the y-axis is the other variable. So these basically are perfectly correlated. Uh, and here's the correlation, a high correlation getting less, no correlation, negative, because higher x means lower y, and so on. So these two examples, the correlation is minus 1. These two examples, the correlation is plus 1. They are both highly correlated. And here's a bunch of plots with zero correlation. And they just look pretty, but there's not much I can say about them. This kind of looks like a W. And this looks like a donut. Yum, yum. This looks like cupcakes. All right. So a very important principle of statistics is this famous saying that correlation does not imply causation. It is so famous that there's an entire Wikipedia article about it. And the main idea is that if two variables are correlated, it does not mean that x causes y or y causes x. Let's give a very simple example. So let's say you have a friend called Bob, and Bob says, as ice cream sales increase, the rate of drowning deaths d increases. So that means ice cream consumption causes drowning. If you were to hear Bob say this, you might have a very puzzled and skeptical feeling about what he says. And the reason is he's wrong. Our logical kind of thinking tells us that there's actually a third factor which increases both the sales of ice and consumption of ice cream and drowning. Basically, when temperature is hot, you know, when it's summer, people eat more ice cream because they like to feel cool. And people also spend more time swimming, which leads, unfortunately, to more drowning. So it's not that ice cream causes drowning, it's something else. Uh, here's a famous XKCD comic. A basically a comic strip that nerds like me like to read and think about, about correlation and causation. Whoops. So uh, let's say Bob says, I used to think correlation implied causation. Then I took a statistics class. Now I don't. Alice, sounds like the class helped. Well, maybe. Because now that he took the class, he knows that just because is changing thinking is correlated to uh, this class doesn't mean that it was caused by it. Ha ha ha. 
Okay, now let's return back to multicollinearity. So I explained kind of informally what it is, and there's a formal definition here. So multicollinearity is a phenomenon in which one predictor variable is can be linearly predicted from the others with a substantial degree of accuracy. So for example, if one variable is predicted by two or three others, that, that would be an example. Perfect multicollinearity is a situation where one independent variable is exactly a linear combination of the others. And multicollinearity is problematic when you do linear or logistic or other regressions. And the reason for this is that when you have small changes in the model or in the data, you can see very large and erratic changes in the coefficients, the estimated coefficients. So this means that maybe your model is not very reliable because you expect your, you want your model to be robust. I mean, small changes don't really affect your estimated coefficients. And here's, uh, I'm going to use an example to explain why multicollinearity can make regression difficult. So as most of you know, there's an NBA team called the Los Angeles Lakers. And let's say, and in the 2019-20 season, there are two players called LeBron James and Avery Bradley. So everyone knows that LeBron James is exceptionally good, whereas Avery Bradley is considered average by NBA standards. So let's say that the coach decided to always put LeBron and Avery in at the same time. So either they're both playing or they're both resting. If that were the case, then from a statistical point of view, it's very difficult to see, is it LeBron who is contributing to the team winning or Avery contributing to the team winning? Because the team does better when they're both in. Mostly it's due to LeBron, but you can't tell if it's LeBron, what's the effect of LeBron without Avery because they played together. And uh, here's another example. If you're trying to predict the student's quiz score based on their previous CGPA and how many hours they studied for the quiz, you basically expect both of these two factors to predict a higher quiz score. But what you probably might notice is that higher CGPA students tend to have more study hours. So it may, if your data has high CGPA students all with high study hours and low CGPA students all with low study hours, then it's very hard to tell, to tease apart which is affecting their grades more because these two variables are highly correlated. And here's a mathematical explanation that some of you might appreciate, but if you don't understand it, don't worry about it. Math isn't that important. Okay, math is important, but but as business students, maybe it's not as important for you. Okay, so the goal is to predict y using variable a and variable b. In other words, find a coefficient beta 1 and beta 2 and for this equation to be true with minimal error. So what if variable b, a and b are highly correlated? Let's say they're almost exactly the same. In that case, these two equations are almost exactly the same. Where the, when you change beta 1, increase beta 1 by 1, while decreasing beta 2 by 1, basically you get almost exactly the same y. And this means it's almost impossible from it using to use statistics to separate out the effects of variable A versus variable B. If you estimate a model in R and there's a problem of multicollinearity, you see that the coefficients become Na for one of the extra variables. So in this case, uh, you know that either you are male or you are female, right? So if you're male, then you're not female. So basically, these two variables are always opposites. And there's actually an equation, which is this equation, showing how they're related. So because there's perfect multicollinearity, 
then the estimated coefficients are just Na for is female. So you do get a good estimate for is male, but there's no way or there's no point to keep trying to get a better estimate for is female. And here's another example where there are three variables, where the square foot of the living area is equal to the square foot of the above area and the square foot of the basement area. So if you try to predict using the three variables, you also get NAs for one of the three. So what are some warning signs that there's multicollinearity in your data? You might get a missing or NA regression coefficients. You might get coefficients that aren't statistically significant, even though you expect them to be, and that's because the other variables kind of weaken the effect. You might find that if you add or delete a variable to the model, you see very different regression coefficients, or you notice that regression coefficients have the wrong sign. So you expect uh, the coefficient to be positive, Let's say more study hours means higher score, but the coefficient is negative, or you know, the opposite. Here's a very, very short coding demo. Right. So basically you can read the CSV files, and in this case, the score and the study hours is quite highly correlated. And here's where I do have the, uh, the define the columns is male and is female, which are always opposites, obviously. So when you estimate the model, you'll notice that uh oh, there's the coefficient of is female is true is missing because of the multicollinearity problem. All right, so that's it. So let's summarize what we've learned today. If a pair of explanatory variables are highly correlated, then you will have the issue of multicollinearity in a linear regression model. And it, multicollinearity means that you get inaccurate or erratic coefficient estimates. So you need to pay attention to this uh, and adjust your model or take better care of the data accordingly. So for example, you might want to insert only one, delete some of the variables which might be, you know, be causing a multicollinearity problem and choose only a smaller set of variables which doesn't have this multicollinearity problem. Okay, that's all for this video lecture. Bye.